What's happening? This is Evan Dunn, and welcome to another episode of the Beats for Breakfast Morning Show. Today, I am joined by a very special guest. We have a casual gamer, also known as Kat, with us. And Kat, how are you doing? Thank you so much for joining the show. Hey, I'm doing super well. How are you doing, Abaddon? I am doing well. All things considered, I am doing well with things are globally in the world. But um, I wanted to have you on the show because I've noticed that you have accumulated over 500 subscribers. Right? Congratulations on that with Thank you in so much. under 20 videos. <laughs> so congratulations yeah. to that. That's a that's a big step. That's a big accomplishment. That's awesome. No, thanks so much. It happened just recently, and it was something that I didn't really expect to happen either because as, as some of you might know, I took like a long break between posting on mm -hmm. my channel. So kind of seeing people still being around and even the new subscribers that have come through, even when they saw that I wasn't, you know, regularly posting, I'm super appreciative of that. So it's very exciting for sure. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. But um, for those people who do not know you, who is Casual Gamer? So Casual Gamer, also known as Kat, <laughs> I am a business owner in kind of my real life, but video gaming and also content creation is my passion. It's something that is kind of a creative outlet for me. Um, and so putting together those two and finding YouTube, um, you know, making videos about those two things that I'm passionate about is why I started my channel in the first place. And being able to share that and finding people who are, you know, like-minded and have similar interests have been the main reason why, why I started this in the first place. Nice, nice, nice. Now, I noticed that you are a huge handheld fan that mm -hmm. you have probably every major handheld <laughs> known to <laughs> man. And salute to that because, um, I think I'm almost there. I don't have the Game Boy Pocket, but I, I don't have a regular DS. Mm -hmm. But I do have, you know, the Vita. I have the Shot to Josh, by the way. I have the Switch. And I also have, you know, the OG Game Boy and the Game Boy Color. And yes. Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Advance SP. That's still, that's still a really good lineup. That you have. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So I think I'm just missing the Game Boy Pocket um, and probably the DS. But I wanted to ask... Since you have been mostly predominantly um, handheld gaming, what were the games that locked you into gaming? Oh my goodness. Um, I think why I love handheld gaming is because my very first console um, or portable device was actually the Game Boy Advance SB. It's nice. a little clamshell design. Um, I was first introduced to Game Boys through a neighbor of mine, actually, when I was a kid, and he had the original GBA, and I begged and begged and begged for, you know, my upcoming birthday that I get a Game Boy also, and I ended up getting that, and I think that's why it's just so special to me and kind of nostalgic in a way. So on that, I played Yoshi's Island, was... Um, one that I was, oh my goodness, I played it nonstop. And also, of course, the Golden Sun series. Um, those two sticks out to me the most. Um, I probably, probably played it over and over again as a kid and still do to this day. Nice, nice. Um, I've only played Golden, the first Golden Sun. I never played, was it Lost Age, the second one? The Lost Age, yes. Okay, that's I one. haven't played the second one. Um, I've only beaten the first one where you had... Um, you know, Isaac on your team, and mm -hmm. I, I was blown away because for me that was my first time of stepping outside of an RPG, outside of SquareSoft. You okay. know, most of the RPGs I played were Final Fantasy or Saga Frontier, mm -hmm. or even um, Xenogears. No, not Xenogears. Um, Zeno Saga. I didn't play Zeno okay. Zeno Saga. But when I actually had a Game Boy Advance, um, a Game Boy Advance, was it on? Yeah, I didn't have an SP yet. The Game Boy Advance, right. playing Golden Sun was just, to me, it set up the, the cornerstones of what I see now as Bravely Default and um, mm -hmm. Octopath, which I have yet to play a Bravely Default game. Mm -hmm. So I, I could definitely see why um, Golden Sun and other games have drawn you in. 
That was, no, um, Bravely Default, definitely a good one. Um, I have never finished it yet, but as for Golden Sun, I think why it's so memorable for me is a, I was blown away that you could play that kind of game on, on a little portable device, right? And also like the music definitely drew me in as well as the characters and the storytelling. Um, as at that age, it was the greatest thing to me, so. <laughs> it was, like the game for its time, I, which I've noticed for a lot of games growing up, they had a, like a really dark storylines where mm -hmm. it's it for me reading like a lot of stories and everything wasn't really my thing growing up, but mm -hmm. I could sit and read RPG games for hours. Okay. Like that was a lot of my reading. So I definitely can, you know, relate to the storytelling because mm -hmm. it was easy to get drawn into a lot of those games. But um, what were some other, like, what was, like, your favorite genre when it came to your handheld games that you stuck to the most? That I stuck to the most, RPGs definitely is one of them because of, again, the story. It's just kind of the immersive way of almost consuming a film to me, but then you're part of the story. So I really love that aspect of it. But also the more relaxing games that are fun to play in between. Um, so things like Harvest Moon, um, now known as Story of Seasons, and obviously Animal Crossing, which I think a lot of us are excited about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. It's funny you mentioned Animal Crossing because I actually wanted to ask you about Animal Crossing. Um, you are probably the most hyped out of everyone I know, which is not a bad <laughs> thing. Okay. Is that That's a bad? Embarrassing. Is that no? Is that a bad thing because it's your enthusiasm along with a few other people that I know. Um, shout out to player Essence. He made a really good video about Animal Very Crossing. Good. Yes. Um, you guys got me to pre-order the game. I'm, okay. I, I got it preloaded in, in, my, in my Switch already. And that wasn't a game when January hit, I was looking forward to buying, okay. you know, day one. That was more of a, maybe two months later, three months later, especially when originally Final Fantasy VII Remake was coming out the same month. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I was gonna get Animal Crossing in March, but with everything that's going on, I just said, you know what, this is a good time to play this as a community. So I wanted to ask you, what is your advice to give someone who has never played at Animal Crossing? Basically to me and other people, because <laughs> I've never touched Animal Crossing in my yeah. life. And I know a few other people are in the same boat. So what advice no, do you give? Um, advice, oh my goodness. I think just kind of being open to the experience that it's not really, um, what would you call that? Uh, I guess it just doesn't have the step-by-step -step that other games would have. Um, you don't have quests to follow, so it's very open-ended and it, you just make it your own. Um, and I think that's the best part about it is because, again, you kind of just make the experience your own. It's very relaxing. Um, you make it how you want it. And obviously the community as well is very excited about it. And they're so um, welcoming and supportive about the game, so which I think is so positive, positive which I feel like we really need in even in not just the world, but just the gaming community as well. <laughs> Seeing some of the, you know, Say news for, for <laughs> other games. So <laughs> Say that again. Um, I would I would definitely say I'm looking forward to it. Um, definitely on a midnight release type of thing hopefully mm -hmm. on the PE podcast too late but um I would definitely <laughs> like to you know play that game with the community you know let mm -hmm. more people see that you don't necessarily have to have violence in a video game to have fun I've always mm -hmm. been a proponent of that video games could be fun based upon your personality and how much you're willing to as you said be open to have fun yes exactly and I think the um it's open to all ages also and i know that's very kind of cheesy to say um but it's true like i got my sister who is you know not to knock on her age i hope she's not watching <laughs> but she's twice my age and she's never played an animal crossing game before i introduced her to new leaf and it you know she fell in love with it and kind of pulled her back into video gaming um and then i see you know that video of the grandma that kind of went viral also last year i don't know if you've seen that but she's logged over like 3500 hours I've on her game yes and i love and i love hearing that it's just super inclusive right and everyone can enjoy it so Nice, nice. Um, now, I will say this. 
um, what's the learning curve like in Animal Crossing? Because I'm brand new. I'm jumping into <laughs> fresh ponds here. So what's the learning curve like? Learning, I don't think there's a learning curve at all. Um, they take you through, you know, very basic tutorial um, as with any game. But otherwise, again, just because you are able to make it your own, there's no um, must do for beginners. Like there's not like a set of tips to make the game great. It's just what you want to do and what kind of gets you enjoying the game and just go with that. Okay, so this is gonna be a real trial. I'm gonna really <laughs> live stream. I'm gonna ask the chat for help. I'm like, I'm gonna need you guys help. What are we building? <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Yes. And I have I have no shame in saying that because I feel as though I'm like, you know, you mentioned I've stuck to a lot of RPGs growing up. Okay. I stuck to a lot of fighting games growing up and sometimes adventure games, but simulation games, um, I've gotten into them every now and then um, i think the most growing up before i played you know mobile guy into mobile game simulations i played games like the sims right okay so i guess it's like i was looking to see what games like the sims or minecraft or animal, not animal crossing um mini world like do these games are they in the same league as Animal Crossing or is Animal Crossing just its own entity altogether? I would say that Animal Crossing probably pulls inspiration from a lot of those games because it's funny that you mentioned The Sims, for example. That was also a game that was big to me um, when I was growing up. So I love simulation games and that is something that you get from it. And then Minecraft also, especially with this newer game that hasn't been introduced before with like the terraforming and actually being able to change your um, entire map. Um, and the design elements also of customizing your house, collecting, you know, your clothing and equipment and things like that. Um, I think it is inspired by a lot of those games that you just listed and um, kind of just evolved into its own thing too, which nice. is awesome. Mm -hmm. Nice, because one of my friends, she got me back into playing The Sims, I only played the first okay. one. And it's like, I had the second one on PS2, but I never played it. Like. One of my best friends, he gave it to me for free on the PS2, but I never got a chance to play it. I oh, have Sims sorry. 2 busting out. Still rap, but it, I never played it. Um, for the PS2. <laughs> and Sims 3, I played uh, Sims Mobile even, and I could see where things have changed. Mm -hmm. um, I played Mini World. That's another game she opened me up to. And um, Minecraft. Minecraft okay. was a game that I just said, I'm going to try this out because it's on the Switch. Okay. And it wasn't the best. It wasn't the best experience for me only because I guess I didn't know what to do. And I guess right. I felt like I didn't have the patience to, to build per se. Yes, okay. So, and then I saw there was a, a survivor mode. And when I got killed, I was like, well, <laughs> how was I supposed to live? And I, I didn't even know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I felt like a little kid lost, lost in a mall or something. So. Yes. Well, you're not going to get killed in Animal Crossing, thankfully. Thankfully. Okay. <laughs> no one's cool. going to come after you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Before you even get your first tool. So that okay. was definitely daunting for me too, uh, with Minecraft. Um, but yeah, no, you're not going to get killed. I promise. <laughs> okay. Cool. 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 <laughs> Well, guys, we're gonna go ahead and take our first commercial break. Uh, we're gonna show you uh, some of the cat's uh, content. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to her channel. Really awesome channel, and support more, more, support more content creators. I'm not, I'm not, I'm against that term, smaller content creators, because you put a 500 people in one room, you couldn't fit everybody in there. So let's, we're not, gonna, we're not gonna call her a smaller content creator. We're gonna call her a content creator. All right, you guys, stay tuned. Here are my favorite accessories for the Nintendo Switch in 2020. So to start us off, it's nothing exciting but memory cards. The Nintendo Switch of course comes with 32 gigabytes of onboard memory, but that is not nearly enough for the long term. It's good to start you off with. I recommend at least a 64 to 128 gigabytes minimum. I personally have 128 in my Switch currently, and I am definitely looking to upgrade very soon to a 200 or 256 gigabytes. <laughs> if you've watched at least one of my videos before, you know that 
any sounds that you're hearing in the background is my dog because he likes to be around when I film these videos and usually chewing on some kind of toy. So I apologize for the background noise, but let's carry on. I personally use Sandus cards. 128 gigabytes you can get very cheaply now for about 20 Canadian dollars, maybe even less when there's a sale. I've used them for my 3DS and my modded PS Vita. They're pretty reliable. I haven't had any issues with them so far, so they're the brand that I continue to use. But I'm sure any other brands out there would work just fine. Just be sure to get it from a reputable seller or a well-known brand if you're ordering it online because unfortunately it's pretty common for there to be fakes of these cards where it might say it has 200 gigabytes but when you plug it in to use it there is only 8 gigabytes or something like that. The second accessory that I Welcome back. Hope you guys enjoyed that commercial break. And once again, if you have not, please support Kat's content. And her information is down below if you haven't. But do not leave this video just yet because there is more to go, more to come. And we're going to talk about the business side of YouTube and just business in general. Now, as you have heard, Kat is a business owner. And I thought that it would be pretty cool just to pick her brain a little bit when it comes to business ethics, when it comes to YouTube and just business in general. Now, I want to ask you a question. How has the circus road of YouTube been for you, especially from casual uploads? Um, you know, it's been really interesting to see because as much as I'm also uploading, I'm very casual about it, um, hence the name <laughs> as well. So when I first started the channel, um, I didn't expect that I would see kind of subscribers coming in as quickly as it did. Um, it was more so just a fun side thing for me to do and um, also being kind of not fully into it as well. I feel like I've been able to watch from a distance how it's changed because I've been on YouTube since before it is the landscape it is now, I feel. So I've seen it evolve, I've seen it grow, and now that you can potentially kind of monetize something that is a hobby, it's, I can't say it's something I've put more thought into, um, but it's definitely interesting. Nice, nice. Um, now, I noticed with your videos, you have really good editing. Um, did you have a background in videography before? Because it, sh it shows that you're new <laughs> to editing. Thank you. Um, actually, no. I basically had to learn how to edit when I made my first video. I think it's just inspiration from watching all of those youtubers um for all these years you know and kind of uh knowing what i enjoy and then hoping to put some of that into what i put out as well that's 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 really dope and it, it this goes back into a previous uh interview i had with mikhail and it's almost like as content creators we wear multiple hats you know mm -hmm. we create the content with a video editor with a sound editor where <laughs> You wear so many hats as a content creator, and especially when you're doing this um, seriously, that you have to wear even more hats. So I do acknowledge that you have taken a lot of time to put out great content, well polished Thank content. You. You're welcome. And um, I also <laughs> wanted to, I also wanted to talk about this because you you did mention um, making a hobby profitable. Now, even mm -hmm. though making content on YouTube can be profitable um creative burnout is also very real mm -hmm. and i wanted your opinion on that do you feel creators burn out due to uploading too much or do or due to a lack of structure um i think both um again just speaking from my perspective when i first started i thought that I would just kind of upload loosely here and there and then I saw that people were enjoying the uploads and I was also um, liking the response as well so I wanted to I wanted to be able to keep up to that um, but at the same time kind of the life thing happens and then when something like this although I enjoy it very very much and the whole process of it, it if it's taking me away from my main business it's kind of tough to justify in my mind to put hours into this although i enjoy it if that makes sense um and as for the burnout i think it's the the pressure to keep up to that um and seeing what other people are making and i know you shouldn't compare yourself to others but then when you see um what everyone else is doing and then you want that as well it's kind of it is a lot of pressure i feel 
So what advice would you would you give um, content creators just from a business standpoint on how to conduct themselves more so as a business? Um, I think it's important to, again, super cheesy advice, but stay true to yourself because in this day and age where everyone is trying to be online on different types of social media and then YouTube especially, it's so saturated. Um, I think people will find you and stick to you and subscribe to your channel for you, you know, because they can get the same information from thousands of different channels. Um, let's say just the unboxing, for example, of the Animal Crossing Switch. Um, everyone is doing it, but I think people will be drawn to you for your personality and then just kind of stick to that. And I think naturally it'll just go from there. Okay, so basically just the whole adage of bringing the you back in YouTube. It's like yes, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you yes. let people see who you are. I I totally support it 100%. Um, so I know you said you are a business owner. <laughs> would you monetize your channel if it blew up? And would you continuously um, do more uploads and things of that nature? Or how would you go about <laughs> So everyone Sorry. shout out <laughs> shout out to the dog shout out to the dog yes. who, who oh, it's my dog his name is murdoch um i'm sorry about that but no that's a really good question i have thought about that and i think i would love to monetize it um if if i get the opportunity to but just so i can put back into the channel um and for it again to make sense for me to continue this hobby um to provide better content for those who are watching um because again from if thinking about it on a business standpoint it's hard for me to step away from that main business because in my mind time spent away from that is um kind of time that i'm taking away nurturing that business where i'm actually gaining income from while youtube at this moment in time isn't profitable for me i totally understand that um just to give some even some transparency with myself um even though my main channel is monetized i haven't really used that opportunity to fully take advantage of that because i Going back to the last question, I saw where I could potentially burn out if I had to do certain types of content. Gaming content can be rather challenging because even though you can be original, what I what I have found is you either have to make really unique content, which isn't always easy, or you have to make on-demand content and you have to make it consistently, which there's there's a battle between both and i i would rather make the unique content but i want to make the unique content from a place where i'm not relying on google adsense or okay. i'm not relying on sponsorships from somebody in order for me to make my living it's kind of like you it's like i seek to create businesses of my own outside of a platform where if i wanted to if i had to compare the YouTube platform is pennies compared to what I'm doing for my regular business. So I definitely understand it's you want to take time to really nurture what's your business because at the end mm -hmm. of the day, this is a hobby. And I want to actually, you know what? This is this is this is a off the cuff question. What is your thoughts on on this? I I believe that there is a danger monetizing your hobby okay um so what my thoughts are on, on yeah. monetizing it yeah um i agree actually so even with um my other business i do it because i enjoy it and it's that cliche thing of like finding what you love to do and and um making money out of that but there's also now once people are paying for it um that that added pressure where it's like are you doing it now just because you love it or are you doing it because you have to and and i don't want to you know lose that kind of spark of, of that passion or whatever of creating just for fun because now suddenly i'm like oh i have to make it so i can profit for it from it if that makes sense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i get it <laughs> I, I i get it because there's uh one of the people that I definitely do pay 
and paying attention to and following, he suggested uh, monetize what you're good at and enjoy your hobby. Keep your hobbies your hobby because okay, it's you know a lot of people don't necessarily go for mass enjoyment or mass joy. It's like people go for what's the most profitable and mm -hmm. not what's going to make them the most happy or the most at peace. And yeah. nine times out of ten, when you monetize, like you said, when you monetize your craft or monetize something that you're that's a hobby for you, not so much your craft but your hobby, mm -hmm. you tend to lose why you loved it in the first place. So no, absolutely. I think it goes from that creative outlet to suddenly, oh, I have to just pump out videos for the sake of doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But um, we're going to go ahead to our last commercial break, and then we'll be right back. Since they announced the release of this console a few months ago. The day is finally here, and I thought that it would be fun to share my unboxing experience with all of you. I'm of course talking about the Animal Crossing New Horizons Nintendo Switch console. Here it is. I can't wait to get into this, but before we start, welcome back to my channel. And for those of you who are new here, thank you so much for joining. My name is Kat, and if you like what you see here today, please consider dropping a like and consider subscribing for more content. I would love to make more Animal Crossing related videos in the near future here, especially with the game coming out in a week. But for the time being, Let's get into unboxing this. All right, you guys, so starting off with the beautiful front of the box, you see Tom Nick, Timmy and Tommy, or Tommy and Timmy, <laughs> we'll never know. And of course, the preview of the beautiful dock and the Joy-Cons with the matching straps. Off to the side is another preview of what the console looks like and it's showing that the Joy-Con actually have the white backing and also the island patterned console. On the side it's a very nice kind of island theme all throughout the box of course and the back is showcasing Dodo Airlines along with the Dodo pilot. I don't know that we have a name for that character yet, but also the villagers looking very ready for <laughs> an island vacation. At the top is the very standard Nintendo logo. So let's get into the box. Welcome back. Hope you guys enjoyed the commercial break and more of Cat's content. And we're going to talk about music for a little bit. And music is just something that you guys know that I love. I Whether it's gaming music or making music or regular music, music is something that I could talk about from sun up to sundown if you allow me to. Even if I don't know what a song is, I'm intrigued to listen to more new music. So... I really wanted to talk to you about video game music because it's different these days as opposed to the HD era. Um, I spoke with um, past guests before, uh, spoke with RDC85 about this, spoke to Spawnwave about this, and music is different. Now with every everything like leading into orchestral, I feel as though some of the MIDI tracks have been more memorable. That's just my personal opinion. I actually agree on that and I don't know if it's kind of the nostalgia glasses also that makes it feel like it's so much better but I mentioned earlier that I love the music from Golden Sun and even Harvest Moon and all those games that I used to play um, compared to the ones I play now I still go back to the old ones where I'm like that was really memorable or I would be humming to those music you know whereas the games I play now I don't really I don't think that anything sticks out to me off the top of my mind right now <laughs> I, I the only music that sticks out to me are the same xenoblade music from xenoblade Xen okay xenoblade chronicles 2 i would say that mainly sticks out because the same composer is the same he also composed chrono trigger for the spin okay so his music is really good um 
Yeah, I'm having trouble now thinking about other <laughs> <laughs> other other games. Um, I think Monster Boy was the indie title. Some of the music is memorable, but again, not all the music you know rings in my head. So right. No, I haven't played either of those, so maybe I need to check it out. <laughs> those I would I would recommend those on the Switch. Those are really good. Okay. Those are really good. But um do you have any other like memorable music songs outside of Golden Sun? Um, for video games? Mm -hmm. oh, oh my goodness. All the Final Fantasy ones I feel like are very good. So the ones from Final Fantasy X is the most standout one for me. Um I didn't play it initially in the PS2 kind of era. I <clears throat> excuse me played the remix um but i remember hearing it my sister used to play it and then even to this day whenever i hear the soundtrack play it just kind of brings um i don't know different feels i feel like i feel you um you played final fantasy 7 growing up not 7 no i played 10 and 9 and then 15 was a most recent got you got you um you are looking into the remake of final fantasy 7 Yes, um, I'm looking into it because of you, because <laughs> you've been talking about it so much. <laughs> yes, everyone, everybody knows that. That's okay. Between that game and what you saw last night, Trials of Mana, those like are my my, my top two. Okay. <laughs> so I'm looking. I'm really looking forward to next month when it comes to RPGs. Good music for that one too. For seven. Very good music. Okay. And I would say, what. What gives me goosebumps about Final Fantasy VII Remake music, it actually transcends the original. And okay. I normally I normally can't say that. When I hear um, orchestral remixes of different songs, it doesn't hit. When I was playing the remake demo, I literally felt goosebumps. I was okay. like, this is... And I thought I was the only person. When I saw uh, even Nick and... You know, feel the people that I know feel the same way. I was like, okay, so I'm I'm not tripping. This is not it's just not just me. me. Okay. <laughs> so I'm I'm looking forward to you know playing these games, but also just enjoying the soundtracks because for me, um, well, let me ask, um, do you play any instruments? I do. I play the piano. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like very relatable um i used to play the piano growing up i haven't played in a while which i'm reteaching myself scales we teach myself chords now and with this little midi controller i need a bigger i need a bigger keyboard to effectively learn but certain songs like um final fantasy 7 it's mm -hmm. like you are able to hear what makes sense because you have that training growing up playing an mm -hmm. instrument so it's like you know, different things make more sense when you finally hear it. And playing Final Fantasy VII, um, or no, playing Trials of Banner, there's just certain songs on the piano I just said, damn, I want to learn how to play this. I want to learn how to play this. So it's, for me, play, making music has really amplified even some of my love of video games. Mm -hmm. No, it's the appreciation, right? Because you hear it in a different way, I feel, um, where it's not just a full track on its own but you hear the different parts of it and the different layers so no i i can see that for sure definitely definitely but um growing up what was some of your just out even outside of gaming what was some of your favorite music growing up my favorite music okay i'm uh <laughs> a bit of a grandma i love listening to oldies like 50s 60s music so like frank sinatra dean martin and beatles and all of that uh, i listen to it yeah from my parents and it just it's still my go-to so i listen to all genres i feel like depending on the mood but that's kind of like what my go-to is if i just want to relax or yeah no i i feel you um Growing up, for me, it was the, not so much 50s and 60s, but 70s and 80s for me. Okay. Growing up, and to this day, and one of my friends makes fun of me because I can't name half the so half these songs, <laughs> but some of the songs, it's like, oh, I don't remember that song. I don't remember that song, but I know it's like, I grew up in a household of just those songs. There'll be times right. where uh, I would go visit my, my uncle, and he would literally have cassettes. <laughs> Like cassette tapes of just <laughs> oldies, 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 and you would just hear him on a Saturday playing the music. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so it's 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 um 
it's fun times in general, but um, I definitely like uh, growing. I definitely like growing up playing, um, hearing different music because my father, um, who's still actively a musician himself, he would he would test me to, to to the point and he would make me listen to a song and have me point out the different instruments that were playing growing up. Oh no way! Was. Okay. So that's, I guess it's like, I got my love and appreciation for music at a, at a young age. But for me, it's always been like the seventies, you know, the eighties, you know, you know, old, you know, Michael Jackson growing up or even listening to Earth, Wind and Fire, you know, Cool in the Gang. Like these yeah. were songs that I heard growing up and I didn't really listen to like anything hip hop related until I got older by, my, mm -hmm. by myself. And then that's when I, I didn't even have anyone introduce that to me. I just happened to uh, just start listening to music more. And I noticed that, hey, I, I could listen to this. I could listen to that. And um, there was, a, I'm, I'm just going to say this. Uh, what's, what's the best way I could, I, could, I could put this? There was a time when LimeWire was good. That's all I'm going to yes. say. I'm not going to get into too much detail with that. <laughs> I remember, yes. <laughs> but um, I I just knew at that age I would have different songs that I would know to listen to. And I didn't. it wasn't until I got older until I understood what that was, where I just cleared out what I had. I started buying albums. But music to me has always been inspirational. I feel as though... You could draw inspiration from almost any type of music if you're open to it. Mm -hmm. I agree with that for sure. Um, and we were kind of talking a little bit, I don't know if I can mention off break with like books and, you know, reading all of that. Um, I listen to audiobooks as well, but then, <laughs> but then I always kind of go back to, oh, if I could be listening to music over the audiobooks, I always kind of still go to music because it, yeah, it's a huge part of, of my life, I feel like, and yours, clearly. Definitely. Actually, uh, I replaced my Netflix account with an Audible membership because yes. that's how much I like audio. Like for me, audio, audio books for me, especially um, when it's, you know, well, can't go to the gym over here anymore, but when it's like, yeah. Where you have like um, time you getting yourself in shape is to me it's perfect to listen to audiobooks because music for me music for me can be distracting a little bit mm -hmm. because I will get distracted and I'm listening to something and I'm thinking hmm I wonder how this would sound if I would do this I would do that <laughs> and I start getting inspiration to want to create music yes and meanwhile when I listen to audiobooks it's easier for me to focus and listen in, especially if I'm doing something that requires me to also focus. It's easy for me to pair my focus, listening and doing something that doesn't require that part of my brain to focus. So it's okay. It, I really like, I really like audible. It's, I have, I use that monthly, that monthly, uh, um, coin each time mm -hmm. and I find a book to buy each month. So it's like, I want to finish about 20, 25 books this year and have a book list of 25 books and not just books that I just said I read through, but books that I read through, understood, and can mm -hmm. actually even help teach and regurgitate better information from. That's awesome. Um, can I ask, are you doing like a physical book with an audiobook or? Yes, I'm doing both. Okay. I'm doing physical ebooks and audiobooks um physical books it depends on the book that i would want a physical book um the last physical book that i got was actually something that josh sent me in the mail with the ps vita and that was uh jab jab right hook okay by gary v so that's gonna be the next physical book that i'm reading and i also have ebooks that i that i have and um i also have outside of ebooks i have but you know the audio books which Reading, I will say, is underrated. That's the best thing I will say these days. Reading and and taking information is underrated. I know we kind of like derailed a little bit with yes. audio books. <laughs> it's all good. For those of you who are watching, um, I definitely, audiobook is not sponsoring me, but I highly recommend getting an Audible account if you are somebody who just wants to continue to grow. 
that's just my two cents on that. But um, outside of that, um, with music, do you feel, hmm, do you feel music these days has lost its flavor compared to where it was growing up? Um, I don't know if it's lost its flavor because um, there are still some that I listen to and it still kind of um, invokes that kind of sense of, of feeling, um, but it just doesn't feel the same. Um, for me, it's kind of like w w w what you said. I'm not going to say it's fully lost its flavor, but I would say you have to do more digging. Now that everyone can go independent, I will say there are people out there who do make quality music, mm -hmm. but it just requires more digging as opposed to there was more good music readily available to the public. Mm -hmm. Now I feel as though it's is based upon what's trendy and what is popular, not so much what is good. Which right. that's that could be a whole other <laughs> conversation altogether. Yeah. But um, to wrap this interview up, do you have any advice just in general for content creators? Um, for content creators, I think um, I touched on it a little earlier, but I think it's about just staying authentic to who you are and kind of being unapologetic about it. Because at the end of the day, that is what would bring people to you and um, would attract your community or building that community. and. Um, also consistency i know i'm not very good at that but if this is what you enjoy doing just kind of keep at it and then i think you'll just naturally see um growth and enjoyment from there i agree um to what you said about consistency um i was talking about this somewhat last night on the live stream um a lot of people tend to give up way too early and i feel as though being consistent is key you know there are um, so else, there's so many people who have said this, and I'm just going to echo this off the same sentiment. There is almost like a miner who is mining for coal. And it's like they mine for so long, but they give up when they're just like a couple of hundred feet away from mm -hmm. striking gold. And nine times out of ten, I feel as though we give up and get discouraged because we get pressured too much. But it's... You need just it just needs focus just needs more hours more training mm -hmm. like the the adage practice makes perfect is really true i did not know one thing about video editing youtube mark or youtube marketing or anything before i uploaded my first video but you learn as you go along you learn as you continue mm -hmm. to go and i think the best way to put this is if you do not like the process the uncomfortable process of growth content creation as a business may not be your thing. Mm -hmm. No, I agree on that for sure. I think it's just a mindset shift of enjoying the process instead of um, just focusing so much on the end goal and wanting to be there um, today. You know, it doesn't take just one action to do it, but it's a um, slow, steady, consistent little actions bringing you closer to that. 100%. Well, guys, thank you guys for watching. Um, Please, once again, if you have not, um, Kat's information for her Twitter, for her YouTube are down below. Make sure you go ahead and support this awesome channel. More content to come. And as we are watching uh, this video, but by the time you guys see this, Animal Crossing would have been out already. If you haven't yeah. got Animal Crossing, buy it now. Yes. So this is, this is me talking to you guys in the future. Buy Animal Crossing. It's going to be a dope game. So... Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you go ahead and follow Kat. And if you guys like this video, please hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And most of all, most of all, you make sure you share this with a friend. This is Avadon and the Casual Gamer, and we are out. <laughs> Peace.